Welcome back. You're watching McLaren Port here on Today's Health, and we're talking with Dr. John Brooks. We're talking about hepatitis C in this segment. What is it? So hepatitis C is another one of the viral hepatitis. Uh, it's a virus that infects the liver directly. Now hepatitis C is different than the other two, which would be A and B that we've discussed. Hepatitis C is transmitted basically by blood. Um, it requires a blood to blood transmission for this to occur. So if we look at our history, um, back before we knew what hepatitis C was, it had a name called non-A, non-B hepatitis. Mm -hmm. We knew about hepatitis A, we knew about hepatitis B, but there was this other one that we knew was happening, we knew it was here, we knew it was going on, but we couldn't find it. It took new technology to be able to actually find the virus. So what they had to figure out is how in the blood of people, how can you find a virus? So we needed technology that was able to construct the virus backwards. And once they came up with that technology, we discovered the virus. We had to construct it backwards. So once they discovered the virus, then we figured out, oh wow, it's in our blood supply. And that was actually what went on in the late 80s and early 90s. And if you think about the other infection occurring at the time was hepatitis, I'm sorry, was HIV. So we tightened up our blood supply. That was one of the things that happened, is that we figured out, hey, non A, non B is really coming through our blood supply. Um, and that is because we know this virus requires a blood person to person, the blood supply was contaminated. We didn't know how to test for it. And back in, back in the day, we'll talk about the 70s and 80s, it was quite common for people to be paid to donate their blood. Okay. So what would happen is, is that if you happen to be a flower child of the 60s and 70s and you needed some money, you'd go and donate your blood and they'd pay you $20. And if you think about the times, that was quite a bit of money. So you could go and get whatever you wanted to go and buy with that. Um, and there was a lot of drug use. And so the difficulty is, is that as injection drug use became quite common in that population, blood to blood happened because, well, maybe you may not understand, but many people that do injection drug, they share needles. So what happens is, is they make a drug and they pull it up into a syringe and it goes from person to person to person in a group. But the problem is then a virus that travels by blood goes from person to person to person in that group. And as that activity happened in our 60s and 70s, we had an explosion of the hepatitis C virus. Well, and I'm thinking too about, um, because I was a, a bedside nurse during that period of time, we really weren't that concerned about, about blood, you know, touching someone else's blood. We didn't wear gloves when we started IVs. We didn't, um, I'm thinking of dentists and all the people, we just weren't that worried. Correct, we just didn't know. Um, that was an era that we looked at blood as being a clean material because we knew about blood transfusions. We knew that blood was a life-saving material. Um, you know, we really reveled in blood at that time when we had gotten good at blood transfusion medicine. Um, we had discovered so much about it and we saved so many lives by giving blood. I can guarantee if you go back to your thoughts of in those early nursing days is that you'd see somebody actively dying, you gave them two units of blood and they came back to life. Yep. It literally, blood is the fluid of life. Yep. So we think about that and we look at blood. So, but we've changed with hepatitis C and of course the HIV epidemic completely changed how we look at blood um, because we know blood can transmit viruses that can then make us very sick. So what are the symptoms of hep? C. So like A and B, when we first get infected, we will have fatigue and malaise, um, and we can get jaundiced. Um, but hepatitis C has the longest time from infection till illness actually shows. It has what's called a long latent period. Many people can have the virus for many, many years before they ever even get sick, which is one of the problems, because now you've had the virus for a long time, and your liver is getting sick, and then by the time you are finally diagnosed with hepatitis C, your liver is sick, you have cirrhosis, uh, and you can get liver cancer. Um, is it common because of all of the blood activity in the 60s and 70s? Is hepatitis C common? So hepatitis C is the most common chronic active hepatitis in the world. Um, in the United States, it is our most chronic active hepatitis. Um, it's, it's just very prevalent. Um, and again, we go back to our change of our society um, in the 60s and 70s, partly by the blood transfusions um, because the blood supply was contaminated. So, you know, otherwise healthy people that got sick that needed blood got exposed to hepatitis C and then the drug use population. So that, it, that transmitted it along a lot of people. So a very healthy generation acquired the virus and then those that were older and sicker acquired the virus by the blood transfusion products. So if there's a long time between contract it and getting sick, 
um, are there health risks associated yeah, with? Yeah, absolutely, and that's gonna be the chronic active hepatitis phase where the liver can actually get sick. Um, if we look in the United States right now, if you were needed a liver transplant, the number one reason for needing a liver transplant is hepatitis C. Really? Because it damages the liver to the point in time where it doesn't function and you'll die without a new liver. So who should be screened for hepatitis C then? So there is a national guideline. This has been out now for about the last six or seven years. Um, anybody born before the year 1965 should be tested for hepatitis C. Um, there is a risk by um, just by their age and by being alive in that era that either by blood products or by being around that, that culture that they could have been exposed to hepatitis C. And so we advise everybody born before 1965 to get a hepatitis C test, which is a blood test. Um, is there a vaccine for hepatitis C? Ah, uh, no, here we go. So hepatitis A and B both have vaccines and immunoglobulin products to prevent it. So if you get infected, we can prevent the infection. We can um, give you a vaccine to prevent it. Hepatitis C has no vaccine. Um, there is no way to prevent the infection except to not get exposed. So that's why in hospitals now, of course, we use gloves. And of course, our blood supply has now been cleaned up. Mm -hmm. uh, the blood supply is extremely well tested. So I like to think about, there's an example. So if I took a vial of your blood and threw it in Lake Superior, with our technology that we have right now, I could find your blood in Lake Superior really? by this technology. So we can find extremely small amounts of things in people's blood. So if somebody does have a virus in their blood, we can find it. So if you're donating blood, we test the blood and make sure there's none of these viruses that are present. So how do you treat hepatitis C? So hepatitis C, it has gone through a major revolution, uh, as everybody knows by watching TV, by a drug called Harvoni. Well, however, before Harvoni, we did treat hepatitis C with a drug called interferon. So interferon therapy, um, if you go back to the 70s, people heard about interferon because we thought it was gonna cure cancer. Uh, when that got discovered, it actually was all over the newspapers for many years as maybe a cure for cancer. Uh, interferons are really antiviral medicines that our body actually makes naturally. We've been able to harvest them and manufacture them in the laboratory, and interferons are highly active against hepatitis C. However, they make you really sick. Mm -hmm. They're very powerful, but they make you sick. So we've then been able to treat hepatitis C for more than a decade. Uh, however, we came up with what are called directly active antivirals, and that is the things like Harvoni that you see on the news. So Harvoni is an oral regimen. It's two drugs. You take it a pill a day for four to eight weeks, depending on which type of hepatitis C you have, um, and then you get cured and the cure rate is about 99%. Wow. And the side effects are almost none. So it has gone from injections, interferon have to be injected, it was injection therapy with other medications that make you very sick for a year to basically four to eight weeks of a pill that cures your virus. So it is truly a remarkable part of medical science. Great, great news. Do you have any closing comments? So um, if you're born before 1965, you should get tested for hepatitis C um, because there is treatment and treatment is now very effective. Um, and certainly if you have children, make sure they get their vaccine so they don't get hepatitis A or B. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Barb. And thank you for joining us. If you have any questions about anything we talked about today, you can call us at Health Access. That's 1-800-228-1484 or you can go to our website, that's mclaren.org forward slash phcontact. You know, you can always go to our website and find reliable health information, order a copy of this program, that's mclaren.org forward slash phth. We hope you join us again next week for Today's Health. Today's Health is brought to you by McLaren Port Huron, doing what's best.